So we're doing exchangeability part two. This is where we finish the proof and we understand uh, why exchangeability is necessarily so important. So exchangeability part two. If you didn't necessarily see exchangeability part one, check on the right hand side, go back, watch that, and then come back here. So in exchangeability part one, we defined association between the left hand side of a population that is treated minus the right hand side of a population that is untreated. And causation will be the full population that is treated minus the full population that is untreated, comparing apples to apples. Do we remember what the assumption of exchangeability was? The assumption of exchangeability was we could exchange the left hand side, we could exchange the treated population with the untreated population and get the same result. So let's assume we have exchangeability. What would this mean? This would mean we could go ahead and write, uh, let me just use red, the right hand side of the population, the side that was untreated, now being treated minus the left hand side of the population, the side that was originally treated, now being untreated will equal the exact same results. So this will actually still equal association. This will still equal the association. Okay, I hope you see what I did here. The left hand side of the population was the side that was treated. The right hand side of the population was the side that was untreated. If these two sides are exchangeable, so they're similar populations, we can go ahead and we can treat the right hand side of the population and we can subtract off the result from, the, from not treating the left-hand side of the population, we should get the exact same result. So this is the assumption of exchangeability. Okay, let's work with this. So let's write out causation. So I'm gonna go ahead and write out causation a little bit more simply. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and factor out the two. I'm gonna go ahead and say causation equals the uh, left-hand side of the population that is treated plus the right hand side of the population that is treated minus the left hand side of the population that is untreated minus the right hand side of the population that is untreated. Uh, so notice I, I factored out this, uh, this negative sign here and I divide everything by two. So I divide everything by two. Okay, for those of you that are savvy with algebra, you should probably already see where I'm going here. So notice what this is, the right-hand side of the population minus the left-hand side of the population. This actually equals association. And in fact, this actually equals L sub A minus R sub A naught. Hmm. Okay, so let's go ahead and factor this in. So we've got now causation, causation equals, so this middle part is association, so I'll pull that out equals association plus L sub A, L sub A, so the treated part of the left-hand side, minus R sub not A, and then all of this over 2. Okay, well, you probably see this as well. The left-hand side minus the right-hand side. This was our original definition of association above. This, we didn't even need to have exchangeability to write this in. So what do we do? We go ahead and we substitute this in. We say causation equals association plus association divided by two, which equals association. So notice we finally are able to prove that causation equals association under exchangeability. This is the real magic of exchangeability. I'm sorry for those that are a little bit uh, uh, not so stable with algebra here, but the magic behind this is that exchangeability allows us to say association equals causation. The magic here is that we can't measure causation. There was no way for us to actually treat the entire population and untreat the entire population. But measuring association in this case is easy. Measuring association simply says take the average of the treated population minus the average of the untreated population. Okay, this is great, though there are some problems. Let's talk about the problems next time.